as you're turning to Jeremiah chapter number 25, I do want to remind our deacons, uh, this is the first Sunday of the month, and so the deacons will be meeting this afternoon at 4.30, and the trustees will be meeting at 5.15, and so uh, you please be on time for those meetings this afternoon uh, to discuss the things that we need to discuss that are on the agenda. <coughs> All this good Christmas music, I, I wish I had a Christmas message today, but that's not the way the Lord has directed us. On the outset of the message, in the reading of the scripture, and perhaps the preaching of the message, you may think this is a negative message, but it's a positive message. It has a positive, it has a positive outcome if you let it be so. In the 25th chapter of the book of Jeremiah, beginning in verse number 1, the Bible says the word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, that was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, the which Jeremiah the prophet spake unto all the people of Judah, and to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, from the, from the thirteenth year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, even unto this day, that is the three and twentieth year, the word of the Lord hath come unto me, and I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but ye have not hearkened. Would you make a note of that little phrase there if you like marking things in your Bible? But ye would not hearken. And the Lord hath sent me unto you all, his servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them. But ye have not hearkened. Would you mark that? But ye have not hearkened, nor inclined your ear to hear. They said, Turn ye again now every one from his evil way and from the evil of your doings, and dwell in the land that the Lord hath given unto you and to your fathers forever and ever. And go not after other gods to serve them and to worship them, and provoke me not to anger with the works of your hands, and I will do you no hurt. But yet... Ye have not hearkened. Would you notice that? He said, yet ye have not hearkened. Unto me, saith the Lord, that you might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to your own hurt. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, because ye have not heard my words, behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, saith the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land and against the inhabitants thereof and against all these nations round about and will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment and a hissing and perpetual desolations. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the sound of the millstones and the light of the candle. And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. Our Father, in Jesus' name, we ask the your blessing to be upon the reading of your word. And we pray and ask, Holy Spirit, that you'll oversee and overshadow the atmosphere of this service. Take charge of it, Lord. I'm just your mouthpiece for these next few moments. I don't wish for this crowd to hear a message from me, but Lord, we need to hear from heaven. We need to hear what thus saith the word of God and not only hear it, but we need to heed it. Lord, I pray that you would speak to every heart today according to your will. 
There may be people here today that are lost without Christ. Lord, I don't know, but you do. There may be people here today that are hurting and weary and tired. There may be people here on the verge of giving up. There may be people here that just don't see the light of tomorrow. But Lord, we find all we need in Christ. And we pray, Lord, that you would speak to hearts today that people would be drawn to Christ through your word. And Lord, we just pray your will be done in this service. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. This particular passage of scripture that I read to you is but a portion of God's prophecy to the people of Judah. We find that out in verse number 1, that the word of God came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah. And uh, this was a message to Jerusalem, the capital, and Judah, the southern kingdom. Verse number 3, the, uh, verse number 2, the Bible tells us that the word of prophecy came to the people through God's prophet, through God's man. And of course the prophecy was concerning their 70 years of captivity in Babylon. Babylon. Now all of us in here who have been saved any amount of time are familiar at least to some degree with the Babylonian captivity. It is one of the most famous events in the life of God's people in the Old Testament. Seventy years of captivity in Babylon. Now, men who are much wiser than I could take the 70 years of Babylonian captivity and they could explain to you the exact acts that they had performed that caused their, them to anger God they could break down for you the sins they had committed and all of that, and that would be a wonderful study. They probably could break down for us in a study of why the number 70 was significant for the number of years that God put them into Babylonian captivity, and that would be a wonderful study, and that would help enhance our knowledge of the Word of God. This morning I'm not interested in in helping your head. This morning I have a burden to help your heart. And I believe what the Lord wants us to see today and what's important to the Lord this morning is for us to see and to understand why they went into captivity to begin with. Why did God allow His people to be overrun and attacked and oppressed and brought to a desolation and the, and the survivors of that invasion would be hauled away into a foreign land and made slaves for 70 years. Why would God do such a thing? What did they do that was so horrendous that God would do such a thing to his own people. Well, if you follow along in the scripture, the scripture records three times for us, and I placed emphasis on it each time that I read it to you, of why God allowed this captivity. Because the people would not listen to God. Did God stop loving his people? No. <coughs> Did God give up on his, <coughs> on his people? No. Did God destroy all of his people? No. But they had to learn a hard lesson. And that is that those who refuse to listen have to feel. You learned that lesson as a child whether you realize it or not. When you refuse to listen to daddy, if it's like my daddy, 
then if you refused to listen, then you had to feel the belt or you had to feel the switch. <coughs> or in the case of my dear godly mama, whatever she could get her hand on at the time as I was passing by. No, God loved his people. And God loves you. But God will not tolerate us not listening to his word. We're good at hearing, but we're not good sometimes at listening. And so in verse number 3, and in verse number 4, and in verse number 7, we find that the reason they went into captivity is because they would not hearken unto God. In other words, they refused to listen and obey God. They just refused to listen. And this was a conscious decision, a conscious decision. They didn't not listen to God by accident. They chose not to listen. If a person comes into the house of God lost without Christ and hears the word of God and hears how Jesus died for their sins and how that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven and how that Jesus loves you and he wants to save you and the Holy Spirit of God convicts your heart and burdens your heart and you get that knot in the pit of your stomach and you realize God's talking to you and you walk out those doors without Christ, you'll never point an accusing finger in God's face and say, I didn't know. Because you do know. Those who refuse to listen have to feel. I want to preach this morning on the importance of listening and obeying God's word. Just a quick outline here. of In verse number 3, we find that they were guilty of refusing to and obey, refusing to obey and listen to God's word. The word that came from God himself, they refused to hear it. <coughs> Excuse me. In verse number four, uh, through the first part of verse number six, if we read that, we'll find they refused to listen to God's men. When God sent a message. Now let me tell you something. There's a lot of people out in the world today that call themselves preachers. And some of them aren't preaching a whole lot of anything but storytelling and promoting self and maybe promoting the ministry. A lot of them have a 1-800 number <coughs> and a PayPal account for you to make their, your donations to them. But let me tell you something, regardless of where that man is in the world. Regardless of what denomination that man may be, all preaching, true preaching, Bible preaching will always point men to Christ and to the truth of the Word of God. So they refuse to listen to God's Word they refused to listen to God's men. And if we look in verse, the last part of verse 6 and into verse number 7 where the Lord says, And go not after other gods to serve them and to worship them and provoke me not to anger with the works of your hands and I will do you no hurt. Yet ye have not hearkened unto me, saith the Lord. They would not only listen to the word of God, they wouldn't listen to the men of God and they wouldn't even listen to the plea of God. God said, listen to me, and I will spare you. So you see, the, 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 the degree of their sin and the depth of their depravity could have all been taken care of. There, there's, it's not that their sins were too hard for God to forgive, they wouldn't listen. They wouldn't respond when God said, I offer you forgiveness. I want to be in fellowship with you. This event 
of the 70 years captivity was also recorded for us in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 36. Let me read a few verses for you. Beginning in verse 15, And the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messengers, that's God's men, rising up betimes and sending because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. God sent his men and his message to his people because he loved them and had compassion on them. He wasn't after them. He wasn't trying to destroy them. But they mocked the messengers of God and despised his words and misused his prophets until the, the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no remedy. Therefore he brought unto them the king of the Chaldees who slew their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary and had no compassion upon young man or maiden, old man or him that stooped for age. He gave them all into his hand. And all the vessels of the house of God, great and small, and the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king and his princes, and all these he brought to Babylon. And they that burnt the house of God and break down the wall of Jerusalem and burnt all the, pla all the palaces thereof with fire and destroyed all the goodly vessels thereof and them that had escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon where they were servants to him and his sons until the reign of the kingdom of Persia to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had enjoyed her Sabbath for as long as she has laid desolate she kept Sabbath to fulfill three score and ten years. That's 70 years. And that verse refers to Jeremiah 25, our text. I want to share with you just a moment how important the emphasis God has placed on listening and heeding His Word. The Bible tells us in my studies, and I may have missed some, and Dr. Martin, if I miss them now, you help me out after service. Don't embarrass me while I'm preaching. But I know of at least Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel prophesied of this event before it ever happened. Jeremiah prophesied about it or wrote about it while it was going on. And wrote the book of Lamentations, the woes of that captivity. And then Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi all were what were called the post-captivity books and wrote about their return. Along with what I read to you from 2 Chronicles, there's 11 books of the Bible dedicated in at least part to that one event in the life of God's people that all started because they would not listen to God. You see, my friend, the Lord places a very high premium on His Word. The psalmist told us in Psalm 138 in verse 2, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast my word above all thy name. He also tells us that his word is not debatable, nor is his word negotiable, nor is his word changeable. Because the scripture says in Psalm 119 verse 89, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. As I try to represent my God 
in preaching His Word this morning. I come to tell you in love and compassion in my heart that God does not wish to be ignored nor does He desire to be disregarded or disrespected. How many of you in here today in human form appreciate being ignored and appreciate being disregarded and appreciate being disrespected. Anyone? Anyone like that? You've got something to say and you just get disregarded as it's not important. Do you enjoy that? God doesn't either. How many of you this morning... Uh, and it's all right if you want to raise your hand. You don't have to if you don't want to. But how many of you in here this morning have some have someone in your life, whether it be professional or, per, or privately, personally, that you have to answer to? Lots of people. You have to answer to somebody. There, there's somebody over you. They may be called a supervisor or a foreman or a superintendent or a manager in the business world, or whatever the case may be. But you're accountable to someone higher than you in the hierarchy of, of uh, the business that you may be in. You answer to somebody. Now that person that you answer to, uh, many times in, 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 in a whatever their uh, description of their job is, they're responsible for things. Now, I was in management when I was at the hospital. And I had 30 people that answered to me. I evaluated all 30 of them every year. And uh, we gave them raises based on their performance. Now, part of my job was not to go out and do the day-to-day -day work. That's what I hired them for. My job was to oversee what they did. But more importantly than that, what I was being held accountable for was to make sure they listened and followed the rules and the regulations and the policies and the procedures and the instructions for our particular department and our particular area of work. Now, those of you that raised your hand that you have someone to answer to, uh, particularly on your job, well, that person, too, has responsibility for you to somebody else. And they're going to make sure that you follow the rules and the regulations and the policies and the procedures and the instructions that have been laid out for you to perform your duties not just to be for that they be done successfully, but they be done safely and competently and accurately. So if you go in tomorrow morning and you decide that you're no longer going to listen to the rules and the regulations and uh, the policies and the procedures, and you're just going to do what you want to do, and you're just going to forget all those other things that are there for you, for your benefit, let me ask you one more question for those that raise their hand. Will there be a consequence for you if you do that? Sure there will. You're going to be written up or you're going to be reprimanded or you're going to be warned or you could be fired. Now, when we consider how important is our relationship to God, we must ask ourselves the question. Isn't God worth listening to? And why do we disregard Him so often? You see, as a Christian, and as a Christian that's been saved 38 years, in 38 years I've grown and matured in the Lord and in the Word of God, and, and I've learned some things. One thing I learned is I have no business nor right to look down my nose at God's people. I don't have any business looking down at the mistakes and the errors that were made in the Old Testament by God's people.
because they, they were not listening to God. I have no right to look down my nose at the disciples who had trouble sometimes with believing and accepting what they had gotten themselves into. You see, this word of God right here, all 66 books of this Bible right here, may not have been written directly to me, but they were all written for my benefit. And when I look at the life of God's people in the Old Testament, I'm not to look upon them and say, ah, oh, well, that's what you get for not listening like we're somebody super spiritual. And thank God that God was merciful enough to show us in the Word of God what happens to people who don't listen to Him so that we may avoid that. God's people are about to suffer a horrible consequence for ignoring disregarding and disrespecting God's word their freedom and liberty would be gone and as a people they'd be mocked and desolate and such describes the lives of so many today who have been overtaken by unconfessed and unrepented of sin it binds them it oppresses them it takes away their freedom and their liberty 70 years is a lifetime can you imagine being in bondage your whole life and never knowing what it feels like and what it tastes like to be free and to worship God and to live in the shadow of his blessings? Imagine how more difficult it would have been for the older ones who were taken away because the Bible told us in Chronicles that, that there, there was no respect when... When the enemy came in and took Judah captive, they didn't care if they was young, old, if they stooped over and couldn't hardly walk. They didn't care. They didn't show any mercy. And the ones that survived the sword was carried into captivity. Can you imagine being a man my age? I'll not live another 70 years. Can you imagine me who's lived in known freedom, nothing but freedom and nothing but the blessing of God for 58 years spend my last year as a slave to an enemy nation simply because I'm out here running around denying my word won't listen to me I created you, I gave you one place to live I meet all needs I feed you, I clothe you I take care of you when you're sick Give you plenty of water to drink. Give everything that you need. And all I ask is you obey my word. He said, now act like you're somebody. And then he says, listen, when you get back, he said, make your family a high priority. <coughs> Boy, that's something that's missing today. And he said, if you want peace in your life, in verse number 7, he said, you start praying for the peace of where you are. He said, you quit looking at everything negative and we got enough people that tell us what our problems are. He said, let's pray for the peace of this place. And he said, you'll have peace. And then he talked about people deceiving you with their words and their prophecies. And so in verses 8 and 9 he said, I want you to start making your study of my word a, a priority and a diligent study in your life. I want you to know my word, and I want you to know the truth. As I close the message today, y'all can come to the music and get the invitation ready, please. I just want to say to you this morning that if you've come, there's a word from the Lord for you. It's not all, it's not all negative We've seen very briefly why God did what he did in that captivity of 70 years. They, they wouldn't listen. But if you're here today and you're lost and you want to be saved, here's God's word for you. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's the word just for you today. Romans 10, 9. If you've come here this morning broken hearted over something in your life I want you to hear the word of the Lord for you in Luke Gospel chapter 4 and verse 18 
Sunday, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he hath sent me to heal the broken heart. If you've come here today and you're weary with life and you just don't know what else to do, and life's in shambles and you don't know where to turn, here's a word for you. Jesus said in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, grace is sufficient. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my person. Come to the Father. Thank you for the word of God. We pray, Lord, that you'd bless the uh, time now and speak to every heart. Heart to you, Lord Jesus, and you'll meet the for salvation or whatever the case. I just pray that, Lord, that they've not only heard, but they've listened. Now they obey your word. word and come to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. What's our number of number three